Welcome, one and all, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, to another wonderful episode of Toonsday. Toonsday, the day we build music from scratch. And we're going to just jump right in on lo-fi. Um, I think it's a good time to do lo-fi as well. I haven't done one in a while. Along with not having do not having done one in a while, I feel like that earns me the right <laughs> to use um, use this my lo-fi EP. Now I've used this a lot. I've used this in a lot of tracks, but also in my defense, a lot of the tracks that I use this on are some of my best lo-fi tracks. I really love this sound. Let me turn this down. This is just my actually. Let me. I've made some adjustments since I've created this sound. I prefer to lower the correction amount to like 35 instead of 50. I've changed in my old age. I can't I can't handle that much autocorrect. I feel like it warbles too much. Um, let me check something. Okay, that sounds pretty good. Maybe we turn it up a bit more. I'm also going to just put on just my lo-fi drum kit. I've got more sounds to add to it, and we'll, we'll get there. We'll cross that bridge when we come to it. But first, what I should do is start like this. Aim the camera down. Put in one of these so that way we can see what I'm doing. And um, let me just try to write something. I really don't know where to begin, so we'll just begin. best way to do it. Um, I'm going to just try to make a strange chord to start with. Make something jazzy. Easy sort of chord to build off always is a seventh. Now I've done this a lot, so we won't That's a song I'm pretty sure I've written. Okay. Um, let's see. Well, I'm starting in A, so let's say we start with A. There's an A major. Let's keep building off this. I like with the F sharp in there. Actually, let's space it out like this. No, that just sort of makes it F sharp minor. Too close together and we get a little too much dissonance. Ooh, that sounds nice right there. So what I did is I just took the E from here and we threw it down an octave. Sounds nice too because we have the fifth in our low voice. And the fifth the fifths are always nice, you know, especially this low. That's what power chords are, you know. So we we do that. I like starting there. Uh, what if we were an octave up? Hang on. The low, the low ends is good. Not the same without that low. Now, if I do that, it's just sort of a suspension, which isn't that bad. But let's try to go. What if we did the opposite way? too messy unless that. I don't hate it, actually. Maybe we could do better. Hang on. Um. Ooh. I like 
that. Okay, okay, let's keep building. So we got, um, change it so which i you know i don't mind doing that um this essentially takes away that extra jazziness i'm adding by, by putting in the f sharp i should turn my mic so i don't need to crane my neck so hard um because i was doing this with the f sharp right now i'm kind of just taking out that f sharp and the other a and just making it a normal a major spaced out I suppose a little bit because we don't we still just have the fifth and the lower and then the third and the fifth on the right but then we we go reverse way in a suspension I suppose because we go this way up to the F sharp and then down here okay I like those two so let's build from there climb just like that attention so I don't talk over that music or play over that music pun two months thank you I really appreciate it you I, I say this anytime someone subs because it's so true you are you are the coal that keeps this Tuesday train running and I appreciate it thank you That's a little too easy. Let's go. We could do better. Uh, all I know for sure is we like the first two chords, right? Going like this. Right into here. What I should do, too, is I, I should think with the lead voice, right? We, we're sort of building a melody already. It goes like this. Now, where should we go? I kind of want, I kind of want it to be this movement. We could do that. This would be the whole melody between four chords. It would go. Maybe, uh, maybe okay, maybe we'll see about the ending there, but. I need to step harder on my pedal. My sustain isn't going. Hang on a minute. pedal that my my sustain pedal for my keyboard is literally held together with duct tape it hasn't it's been held together with duct tape for years so i really haven't needed to get a new one don't give me problems now baby Ooh, i like that so I skipped the C. We're not going up normally. We're not going. Instead, we're going. And then maybe, maybe then, maybe then we do that. So this broad, non-jazzy chords would just be basically. That's the plain version of the chords, but we're going to play them a little bit jazzier. Um.
close. We're close. I feel like we got three of the chords so far now. This one's good. This one's good. That does work as well, but it's, it's it's just okay. And I feel like the rest of this is good, better than okay. So I don't want to like compromise, you know? Let's think, okay, I'm gonna think real basic bare bones. Where are we going? We start here. Oops, no, it's minor. We'll start there, we go to minor. B minor right there, D major, and a couple of the ideas that's floating out is we can easily go to E major, because that'll just go right back into there, but that's eh, kind of plain. What if, hang on, what if we went to F sharp? Uh, let's start over, so we go there, then we go, then we go, and then we go, maybe, can we make it jazzy? Uh, too high there. Hmm. I'm kind of stuck into a corner here. Because the F sharp is not bad, but if I play it up here, it feels too high. And then when we jump back down here, we're like, oh, whoa, low end. But if I play it down here, it's too muddy. good news about all of this is that I do by playing is over and over I get much better at playing it so when we actually hit record it should hopefully just flow right out not that this is that hard to play even So broad terms would be like this. Now that's real basic, so we can make it better. Give the melody some movement.
That's simple, but I like it. Hang on. Okay. Here's what we're going to do. My mouse fell asleep during that whole time. Let's go in here. Let me, let me go back to the small camera. Actually, you know what I should do? I should change this so it looks better. Zoom. When I, I gotta manually go in and change my transition, but it looks way cooler than going the other way. <laughs> um, the things I do for quality. Let's just loop this basic, basic thing. Hang on, did I actually? I always need to do this. Um, shrink it here. Now loop it. Uh, turn it down as well. It's probably going to be way too loud. It actually did it. Okay. Let's uh, slow this down. Uh, it might be helpful if I do this. Good enough. There we go. We got our metronome. Now, does this fit with the way I was playing? It's a little bit faster. We could, let's go, when we're, when you get this low in the BPM, like, like the difference between like 135 and 140 could be completely unnoticeable a lot of times. But the difference between like 85 and 90 even though it's still just 5 BPM difference, it can be so dramatic when it's this slow. So just by dropping it just 5 BPM, it can really be... This is better, yeah. Um... Yeah. yeah, yeah, that was it. That was it. Um... Let's do this again. See, that way we can actually see what I'm playing. Back to here. And then I don't even need to hit record with Ableton's always recording MIDI feature. We're good. it snapshot let me I think I got one back here a little bit ago Got to fix a couple things, but it's workable, doable. Let's take a gander. 
Um, one thing right away. Whoops. I don't know what I, th I don't even know what that button does, but let's not, let's not click it. I want to check my pedal. Eh, okay, let's, let's adjust the notes first. to with some of these just manually drag it rather than force it just because if you force it it'll just be perfectly on the beat which i do want it to be more on the beat but if it's always perfectly on the beat then it sounds a little too robotic so sometimes i like to just more drag it and get it close enough okay right there i can tell this is off you can see it, it lifts off so we got this little half half a millisecond of Silence where it lifts, but we don't want that. That one looks fine. This one also, I'm surprised I didn't hear it here. I guess it's a little smaller, but let's fix that too. I like this, but I actually think it's a little too short. Let's try to add some variety in the melody. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to consolidate it at twice the length. We're going to loop that. So here it is. First half, let's leave alone. Sounds good. This one, let's add some variety somewhere. I like the beginning. Probably on the three. That's what I hear, like this. There, I think that's actually perfect. That's all we need for variety. Um, all right, sounds good. Just call this EP. Let's um, let's make our drums better, right? We need an actual beat for our lo-fi beat. Come on, don't do these CPU spikes again. I thought we were over this Ableton. I'm just adding a new track. Chill, man. Separate these out to their own track. There we go. Let's give them their own EQs. Uh, let's see. Grim, what's going on? How are you doing? Welcome to the late night tunes day. I'm doing pretty good. Then again, if a lot of my 
a lot of my viewers are Europe, so um, in Europe, they're not literally the country of Europe, um, and so therefore, the sun might be rising soon for them. I don't know. I don't know what time it is in Europe. I imagine it's got to be like four a.m. or something. I don't even hear this kick anymore. Um, but we got individual volume control now, right? And let's let's do this right away. Uh, it'll maybe need some adjustments, but let's assign sidechain compression. Um, I already have one in here that I probably always use. Oh, screw it, let's do it. Whoops, not the EP, the kick. I, so I randomly picked all of these drums right now. I just clicked on, around. That said, I like this kick. I don't know if that's because it's already tuned to A. And that's why I'm just drawn to it. Let me take a look at it. Wait, this is not, that's not the right track. We need more kicks, though. I, I, I'm not, I'm not a patient fellow. Let's, let's plan it out more. But I like this kick right now. Let's keep it going. Feels like we need kicks on the changes. So, like, like at the very least, right here. Is it night over there too? Yes, it's night for me. Seven, seven forty p.m. by me. to my viewers and not pay me a cent on it. Uh, thank you. 940 there for you. Okay. Well, yeah, it is. It's a late night Tuesday for you, too. I, I was mentioning earlier I couldn't be live last Tuesday just because, I mean, I technically could have, but I would have been, like, screaming at you guys the whole time just because there was a chainsaw, like, three feet away from my window that's, like, right there. Um... And it was going and going and going. It was actually a very frustrating day just because, like, I couldn't really do a lot. Like, I'd have to turn up all my volume super loud to hear anything. And if I would have done a tune set, I would have just been, like, shouting at you guys in order to be heard. Especially if we're making, like, chilled music like this. I'm going to be like, okay, now we're going to add a snare. <laughs> no, 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 no. I don't want to do that, so... But hey, if we're gonna do a chill lo-fi, why not do a late night lo-fi, right? Tuesday after dark. Oh yeah, baby. It's better this way. Alright, I'm gonna consolidate these to this length. So we can add a little bit more variety in our drums. Um, we have enough drums now that I wanna just analyze the kick real quick try to get to the bottom of why I like it so much. I have a, I have a feeling I already know why. Uh, I officially started to work with Ableton. Nice. Good to hear. How's it going so far? Ableton doesn't... Yeah, it, see, this is why I like it so much. Because our song's in A, and this kick is in A. So that, that's, that's why I really like it. That's why I'm drawn to it so much. But hey... If it ain't broke, don't fix it. I just got lucky when I picked the uh, kick right away. The snare, I could, I could, I could maybe. It's okay. It's not that great. Let's see what else we got. Uh, last weekend, I tried to make uh, comp to recording a s recording song with backing track. Wait, you you tried to make a comp to record a song with backing track? Okay, I think I know what you're saying. Oh, for a second, I was wondering if you were trying to use comp comping. I don't hate this for some reason, but overall the snare's too loud. Let me just turn this down. Not this one. Oh yes, comping. Oh okay. How did how that go? I love comping in Ableton. So glad they finally added it because they were kind of the last one 
I don't know. There's probably other DAWs that can't do that, but um, but there's been there's been a lot of uh, a lot of DAWs that have been able to do that before Ableton. So it's nice to see them keep up. I guess. I feel like I use this snare all the time, so let's see if we can go somewhere else. Took me about four hours to understand the whole process. Okay. Well, that's okay. Because now that you got it understood, now it'll be way quicker all the other times you use it. It took me a while the first time I was using it. Point is that I couldn't get the tone of the guitarist I wanted. Ah, well, that's a whole nother thing. And that could drive you mad trying to get the right tone. That's why I feel like I sort of got lucky. Maybe not lucky, but it's like um, just the way I did it. It was where I get all the tone that I want from my Digitech pedal. I got my Digitech RP500. Right? Yeah. And um, that's got like, you know, amp selectors and cab selectors and all that. You can just, you build the guitar sound you want. Uh, you're using Zoom GN, G5N. Well, technically you can use any, any multi-effects pedal. Um, but what I did is when I first got it is I just sat down and I saved like 10 guitar tones that I really liked. Uh, I just, just messed with them, fiddled with all these settings and just got the ones that I thought would sound good. And then I practiced recording some of them and then hear them back and make sure they still sound as good in the recording as I, as they otherwise did. And then once I got them, uh, honestly, I was done. I've been sort of coasting on those same guitar tones for a while. And I will go in Ableton and try little things here and there to spice them up just because my guitar tones otherwise are always sounding the same. But at the same time, when they're good... It's like, if it ain't broke, don't fix it sort of situation where I like, I don't know, the, for instance, the tunes day that, that were heard in the intro right now, the one that I did last week, um, I used all guitar tones that I had previously saved and I think they sound fantastic. It's a sound that I like. So, so I keep it and save it. I'm in the process of creating ones I like and keep them. Yeah. And so that process can take a while, you know, finding and honing in on the tones that you like for guitar. But once you got them saved, then the rest is a breeze because then you just use those for for whatever else I'm trying to sound like um Olivia goose i don't know what that is actually between this one and where was the other one? I think it was this one. I'm going to go with this one. It's a wonderful band of uh, trap math instrumental songs. That's cool. How to describe them? I, I think that's probably the best way, I suppose. Um, okay, so we got our tones; they sound nice. Let's um, let's make them a little. Let's make the drums a little bit more interesting, right? It's pretty basic right now. If I double click, are you gonna do the right thing? Good. Whoop. Hang on. Uh, I haven't saved yet. What is today? It's the fourteenth, right? October 14th. Why does that date sound familiar to me? What happened on October 14th? I don't know. 
I feel like I'm forgetting something. slowly build the drums, right? Simple. One more note added. We get a little, maybe that's a little too busy at the end here. You know, we look at all this empty space and then there's like a thousand kicks in a row. Uh, maybe we get rid of this one. Then these, no, wait. Uh, whoops. What if this one was there? that I like that so we're gonna do that copy and paste that right here and let's try to add some variety just at the end and this could be with the snare as well should we loop the snare in on this where's the snare at? snare's all the way down there How do you feel about changing the kick tone? Uh, I'm not sure what you mean. I don't. I don't think I want to because I kind of like the kick. It's tuned to A already. I like that. I mean, it could maybe go down a little bit actually. Though. few songs that change the kick um, as if it were a bass well I know that that is something common to do sometimes is you essentially very heavily tie your kick to your bass um, so essentially anytime a bass tone comes in that's when the kick comes in as well I've done that on a few tunes days as, as well but um, I don't think I want to do that here and in fact with a, with a lot of lo-fi like this sometimes, I don't need to get too bogged down in the bass 
because especially when I'm using this lo-fi EP, like we have a good low end feel. I mean, it's, it could use a little bit more. I don't think I'm gonna go for a very complicated bass. It'll probably be something just like, uh, but I, I definitely have done that in the past where you essentially just tie them together. So every time a, every time a kick comes in, so does the bass tone. Um, so it is very effective. Uh, that, that happens a lot in um, trap music. Very common in trap music to do that. Um, hang on, this isn't done. Why did I just leave that like that? I need to do sub sign bass and then oh, turn it down before I blow your ears out there we go now I don't even hear it up a little bit Oh, it's not, and it's not a C sharp. It's a D. I forgot. That's why that sounds awful. Um, let me do this as well, real quick. Side chain compression definitely needs to be on the base. Why I can't click? And then also just throw on an EQ just so I can look at it. I'm probably just going to do this for the bass. Which is nothing. I'm just playing the low end on the. Uh, and just start right here. Playing the low end of the keyboard here. You can't even really hear it. Which is kind of good purpose of the bass, at least in the way that I want to use it right here, snapshot what I just did, is it shouldn't even really be noticeable in the whole ensemble unless it's taken out. This is one where I don't mind just quantizing it. Right now, I don't even notice it when I take it out. So let's turn it up a little bit. Hang on, the whole thing in general is getting a little, now I'm looking at the OBS meters, it's a little loud for you guys. So we're just gonna turn it down a pinch, all things. There we go. And I'm just gonna turn up my speakers to hear it a little better. You might need to do the same. Sorry if I get too loud then, but I was also looking over here and we were already like hitting the zero and we need, we need some room in our mix to add some extra bits. So, um, but this is a good start right now we got our, our basic, we have our, our base for our lo-fi. And when I mean our base, I don't mean like B-A-S-S. Uh, I like the song that the bass can dancing with the melody, uh, but I'm not able to write it. I like that a lot too as well. I like when a bass will sort of almost be the main melody. Um, I've written several tunes that like that. It's I feel like that's really easy to do when you're writing like synthwave and cyberpunk because those basses just have such power and such... Um, like like a frequency presence and what i mean by that is if we look at the um uh, not the iq the eq of um of this one right it's really just the low end frequencies yeah we got these little extra bits here uh, you know but it's really just this area of the frequency spectrum but in synthwave you'll layer on basses and sometimes the basses just serve their own purposes where you'll even have a bass track that's literally just like this 
you're like, I don't even really care about any of the lows. The whole point of this part of the bass track is to just get the highs. And, and, uh, and then when you finish layering it, you just end up with this chunky, beefy bit of, uh, bit of bass. And that's, that's, I think when you can do nice, um, sort of more lead melodies in the bass and, uh, and yeah, it's good. Um, hang on, let's go pacing wise. Uh, whatever, who cares? We'll figure it out later. Um, but so we we get that we got our base for our lo-fi, and when I mean base, I don't mean B-A-S-S, I mean B-A-S-E. So like our foundation, like the, which I consider the electric piano. So when you're making lo-fi, you start with like a raw sample that's like a chord progression or. Uh, a little jazzy piano melody or guitar melody or something, whatever. Um, but that's the sort of thing you build your beat off of. That's why the bass isn't being very dominant here. It's just sort of helping fill in the low end frequencies that this one isn't doing. But this one touches on so much of the low frequencies, I don't feel like it need the bass to do a lot. But then we, we figure out what else we need, right? Um, second thing that we could add, it would be some sort of melody over the top. Now, there's a lot of options. I do, I like to find um, saxophone a lot. We could make our own stuff. I use organs sometimes too. Like a really common one that I will do is this combo F, which I love this sound. Turn on heavy vibrato, fast vibrato. Do you like Neo Soul? Um, I don't ever make it. But I do like Neo Soul still. I think it's not bad. Um, but I have never really tried to, to make it. Turn it down a little bit. Kill them lows. Okay, wait, wait, wait. I'm, I'm inspired. No, no, no. Start from the beginning. I like that. I love that beginning. Um, let's just do this. Snapshot that. Love the intro. <laughs> what do we do for the second half? Let's fix the timing, though. I feel like I played it better than it recorded in Ableton, but maybe I'm just crazy. Just copy paste it right now, consolidate it all together, and loop it. Um, actually, we'll do this. We'll consolidate it at this length because this is how long I'll need it to go with some variation. Uh, you're listening to Neo Soul lately. It's like a lo-fi. It's like lo-fi to you, but with some fast licks on guitar. That's true. I think, um... I think... 
I'm really into sort of any lo-fi esque genre. You know, I, I don't know. I guess I've always thought of lo-fi as such a new music genre, but now. In general, it probably isn't, I suppose. I mean, shit, you could say a lot of the stuff that, like, MF Doom was doing, has been doing for, or was doing, it's not around anymore, um, for the past two decades, um, fits very closely into the lo-fi genre, but, um... Maybe I just think it's so new because its popularity has gotten so... Is, has grown so much recently. Bills man, what's going on? Welcome to Tuesday After Dark, baby. crazy here watching a football match and of course me too well hey i'm happy to provide the soundtrack this might not be the <laughs> most exciting soundtrack to a football match but tell the players to just chill out a little chords. I sort of want to go like really fast here. Like ba da 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 da. here. Da -da 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 -da. Ba -da -da -da. And then it loops. It's not a bad little melody over the top of this. Um, da -da -na 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 -na. 
Maybe maybe a shorter on these ones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll go with that. Um, okay. So now as far as this whole... We, we had some... We can start making some more structure to our song right now. Because right now as it stands, it sort of just starts at the chorus when you hit play. Right? But if we did that, then our song would be over in 20 seconds. We don't want to do that. We got to stretch it out a little bit. So we think of how we want to start. <laughs> yeah, you're watching the real football. As opposed to what American football, I suppose. It is fake. Fo it is fake football. Do we start like this? I like this, and the only other thing I'd want to add on that over the top would be maybe some like light shimmer ambience, and I'll I'll get to that by what exactly what I mean in a little bit. Let's add some variety right here. Hang on, right here. After this kick, cut out the drums. Another thing too. Organ's a little loud. Maybe we could get some reverb on it too. Should we try that? Hang on. Let's delete that. Uh, let's. I I do cathedral all the time, but I feel like the the reverb doesn't need to be huge. And cathedral is always huge. It's great for making your synthwave track enormous, all that sort of stuff. Um, but let's try, let's do church. Church is a good one too. We're going to go to church guys. Now this is max reverb. So let's turn it down a little bit. Like there and then down a little more. football seems fun too yeah it's a lot more um painful i think just because it's like you know i guess it's it's like rugby but they got padding so that means rugby is more painful i suppose that's the one thing that i can that i will i guess give like non-american football players and by that i mean i guess by american standards soccer players um but the um the flopping ooh it's very cringy <laughs> when you see these guys just like pretending to be injured and and uh and rolling around in agony just to try to get their opponent to get a get a flag thrown on them it just makes me cringe a little watching that <laughs> i feel like and I don't know, maybe I don't I don't follow it close enough, but they should like crack down on on floppers, right? Do they do that? Like okay, maybe they don't watch any replays or anything like that, so they can't really like, you know, when the when the ref's got his back turned and then he turns around and the player's on the ground holding his face and screaming in agony. He doesn't really know what just happened. Um so uh I don't know, but I feel like maybe after the game is done and they show the highlights and they're like, yeah, look at this guy. He's just clearly faking it. There should be some like penalty or repercussion or ruins your credibility the next time you flop or something. I don't know. <laughs> maybe it does. Maybe certain refs are like, oh, this guy. Okay, I'm not going to believe anything he tries to call a flag on because he's such a, he's such a drama queen. He always does this. 
maybe. I don't know. I, I like I say, I don't follow. Uh, I don't follow this. I guess I don't really follow any sports that closely, but uh, specifically that I don't follow. Okay, so right here I have this all cutting out because I feel like this is the perfect chance to switch to something else. Do many players fake like that? I don't think it's like an enormous amount or anything. But I just know that that's, that's the sport that you see it the most in, you know? Like you don't see... Um, American football players doing that that much. I guess maybe sometimes they might. But um, you could find, like, tons of videos of... of uh... Ninety percent of them? Okay, never mind. Uh, <laughs> Grim has confirmed it's it's more more than I thought. Okay, so... What I'm doing here is I'm just going back to basic metronome. Um, because what I want to do is try to write a new new section. Uh, we go for a minute here. If we can write a new section, that's we'll write it on the electric piano. And if we can get it to go at least... I like to do this just to give me like pacing ideas for the whole song. Like, what if we did this for a length? Uh, whoops. No, no, no. No, no, no. That's why you stopped watching it, Grim? Interesting. Yeah, I feel like they need to do something about that. However, at the same time, I've heard that the, like, um, like, FIFA League, like, I don't know what it would be called, organization, that's a better way to put it. Um is uh maybe a wee bit like corrupt or something i've i think i've heard stories of them taking bribes and uh and doing things they shouldn't be doing so i don't know how how I, high of a priority that is for them let's see if we did this the song would be just shy, like, two minutes, 40 seconds. Now, for a lo-fi track, that's totally fine. I mean, shit, there's so many lo-fi tracks that are, like, a minute and a half long. So we'll play it by ear, but this pacing could technically work all right. We'll see. Um, but one thing for sure, we need to come up with something in the middle here. So let's do that. Let's do this. Zip. Make it bigger. Just the camera. They're very corrupt. <laughs> yeah, I, I've I've heard stories that um, the organization in general is not um, not super cool. I think I think I heard about the bribes in that they were taking bribes for where the um, World Cup would be hosted and stuff. So, like, you know, World Cup is a big deal. So a lot of cities are like, hey, host it here. Hey, we want to have it. And um, the organizers sort of were like, well, who's going to pay us the most money? Yeah. Okay, we'll go with the guy that's going to pay us the most amount of money. Like them personally, not to the organization or anything. Like, like literally personally to those people who was going <laughs> to bribe them the most. <laughs> Thank you. 
Okay, so we we go like this. Whoa, not that. Coming out of here. Playing seventh chords, um, sort of. So the, the starting thing is just a, an A major. And then I sort of do an opposite. Like normally, it's sort of like a suspension, or it would be a suspension if I played it like this. Right? We're suspending this F sharp, and then it gets resolved down to an E. But I sort of do it the opposite way, where we start on the E, and then we go up to the F sharp, because it sort of met more acts as like a passing note or a leading into this next part, which then is a seventh. Um, wait. Which is a B minor seven. I'm just spreading out, and I put the third and the seventh in the in the right hand, with the um, the root and the fifth in the left. So so yeah, there is a minor seven. And then we go up to D. That one's not a seventh. It's done more like a suspension again, where we start on this B, and then I resolve down to the A and the F sharp, which is also part of that. And then we go back down to the B, which is back to a seventh. So there's a seventh in the middle and, and at the end of, of the whole progression. Uh, watch this video, the player screaming so loud that you can watch the replay, it was nothing. <laughs> yeah, see those sort of things. Those things make me, and I think a lot of people take um, football or soccer, whichever you want to call it, um, less seriously. Uh, let me ask you about some music theory. Okay, I'll do my best. I mean, I did technically go to music school, so I honestly really have, I have no excuse and I should be able to answer theory questions. At the same time, it makes me feel old, but music school was... Oh my God, almost 10 years ago. Oh my God. I'm so old. <laughs> okay. Anyways. Um, God, was it really a decade ago? I don't even want to think when I was in high school. So let's say we're coming from here. Okay, I think I like that. I like moving to the C sharp minor. Let's make it a little more interesting. What's a what's a seventh version? Okay, let's uh, let's cheat a little so I don't have to play the lead into it. Uh, where is a looper? We'll just start from there. Um, I was studying this progression, A major seven, um, G sharp, G sharp uh, flat thirteenth, C sharp minor seven, A sharp diminished seventh. Um, I was thinking about the G sharp and the A sharp chords. So like A sharp diminished seventh would be like what? Well here. There's a sharp minor. There's a sharp diminished with a seventh. So 
interesting. Um, or I think that would be it, right? Yeah, I don't think you'd play it like that. That sounds wrong. Um, the G, I thought it was the secondary dominant of C sharp. This progression is 4-4, four, four, and the chords are played for the entire bar. Um, G, I thought it was the secondary dominant of C sharp. I guess it's sort of, it would be, wouldn't it? I can try to play that. Uh, well, uh, let's let's see if I can play this. I'm not necessarily the best at reading that, so it would be A major seven to a G sharp seven to the flat thirteen. Uh, that would be the thirteen. I gotta think about this. <laughs> that would be like this. Um, uh, how would I play that a little cleaner? Let's go like. Um, mm, I don't think I'm playing that right. It also doesn't sound, I don't think, very good on this this keyboard. Boy, I am getting uh... <laughs> I keep getting these spam texts from someone that's trying to scam me. Um, it's it's some girl that was like, "Hey, hey, is this Noah? We met at the bar the other night. Uh, I'd love to get together and talk some more." And I just replied back, "Wrong number, sorry." And uh, and she replied back, oh my gosh, I, I, I feel so bad. I'm just messaging some random guy. And then she sent a picture, which, okay, she, it's not a she. And she sent a picture, and I didn't reply to any of these. I just deleted them. And then now I just got another text that was like, um, it was like, yeah, thanks for not being angry. I suppose not all men are jerks. Uh, Want to talk? What's your name? It's like, fuck off. <laughs> I haven't replied to anything other than telling you you have a wrong number. Go away. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm, I don't know what should I say what should I say back it's it's okay it's definitely not a woman it's just someone trying to scam me or, or trick desperate men into being like oh, a grill is talking to me um, so I'm trying to think what I should say back <laughs> be like wow you're easy you're just like you don't even know me and you're 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 trying to initiate conversations with me or, or the other thing is I could test and see it's, if it's just like a bot, you know? Because it could just be sending automated responses. Like, it assumed I would say it was a wrong number the first time because I'm obviously not Noah or whatever. Um, so it, it, like, might not even matter what I say back. I could just be like, fuck you, and it'll be like, haha, you're so funny. I'm, I'm doing this now or something like that. Want to hang out sometime, bad boy? <laughs> No, should, I don't want to do that. Should I just send them like a, a stupid meme or something? I don't know. I don't know what I should send them. I'll, let's, we'll think about it while we, <laughs> while we do this. Um. But I'm definitely uh, getting some desperate attempts at somebody. Somebody trying to scam me. Or maybe it is just a really, really slutty girl. I don't know. Could be. Probably not. Probably some guy that um, share one of your songs. Yeah, right. Oh, that's 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 five head right there. <laughs> oh yeah, be like, hey, what what am I doing right now? I'm just jamming out to this really awesome music. You should take a listen and then then send it to them. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good idea. <laughs> okay, let's see. Hang on, what was I going to do again? Oh, yeah, I was going to do this seven. Uh, maybe I need more lead in to hear how this is going to feel. Okay, I'm, I'm guessing there. Um, I don't mind starting on this C sharp minor seven. Where do we 
go from there. Because I kind of want to go to that. in here then? That's the classic cartoon climbing sound. You play those sort of... Um, you don't get a good view of it when I'm doing in this. Hang on. Pull that up. When you play this chord, it's just like a, I don't know what it would be, a diminished? It's obviously a diminished with another diminished essentially it's equal spacing between all of the notes which is why it, it can feel like it never ends and the same thing works for falling if you play the right notes what all those classic cartoons would do when uh, when the score was their sound effects. Remember those? The good old days? No, no one remembers those. That was like the 40s. No one here was alive in the 40s. But I guess we've all watched those cartoons, so <laughs> we can relate that way. that so much. Hang on a minute. I'm just playing this. Let's try that. Um, more leaving. Let's try it on the second time around here. Screwed up some of that, but I think we got something that's workable, and I'll fix it. It's the beauty of doing it in MIDI, is I can just go in and just change the notes I screwed up on. 
Wish I could do that on my guitar. Well, actually, I sometimes do do that on my guitar still. It's just more of a pain in the ass. Um, first off, this was the wrong note. Let's consolidate this here. I was also late on a lot of these. You can see it. Uh, and then somehow I was early on this one. Um, I'm gonna do this actually. As I said before, I can just you can just grab it and then press you know the arrow key and it'll auto align it perfectly to the beat and you're all done. But I don't want to do that because then it is just perfect. I'd rather just do it by hand and then it's not perfect. Then it feels more human. This one I need to readjust the pedal. So that sounds interesting right now. Yeah. Um, but I can tell the pedal gets lifted way too early. You can see that right there. Oh, it's because it was almost right on the beat. That's why it sounded kind of interesting still. But we don't want that. This one honestly is a little too much. We can we can cut the pedal off a little a little sooner. Um This one's fine, except let's fix this note. This one's way too early. Uh, these are also a little too intense. But yeah, 94 is way too hard. Bum. Yeah, that's the note. Bum. No. Okay, so now let's say we take this. Uh, is this looping? Let's consolidate it, loop it to here, consolidate it one more time, and I might want to put some variety in there, but otherwise for the most part, loop it to right here. Now if I do put variety in, well, I guess we got to think of how I want to do the ending, because right now as it stands, if we go with this ending, it'll end on an A, and then pick up again right on an A. That's not awful, but we might want to come up with something better. Let's hear exactly how to transition. See, I don't really like that that much. So, what we might end up doing, actually, I might just be able to do this as a whole. On this thing, what if this last one, whoops, actually goes to an E? Now, we could go to this low E. That might be... Let's hear how this goes.
Maybe it would sound better if we go to a B. And here's why. We're, we're going to try to B. We're, we're going to B it. Here's my logic behind this. We are going to an F sharp minor right here. There's two reasons this should work, theoretically. We're going to an F sharp here. If we follow the circle of fifths, the F sharp is our six in our whole our whole thing. I guess you don't need the circle of fifths to know this is the six. But if we follow the circle of fifths, uh, what one four seven three six two one four seven three six two, and then I guess it would go five one. But but we can go back to the normal tonic of just one after the two. And the reason why I think that's okay is because on our chord over here, that's exactly what we do. Right here, this goes from two to one. So maybe it'll just sort of be like a throwback to that as it helps transition into that. I guess we'll see. Theoretically, it should work <laughs> for those exact reasons. So, okay. Let's, let's flush out the chord a little better. Let's make it a seventh too, because we're jazzy. Um, guess it would be that. Actually, yeah, hang on. Well, okay, let's get more context. Okay, but it's not that good. I think I'm thrown off too because we hear the A right here. Hang on, without hearing the A. No, no, no. Uh, okay. Um, Here's, here's what I need to change. I don't want it to start on the A up here. That's the problem. Because we do the same progression every time. Bum, 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 bum. By the last one, I'm, I'm tired of the A. I don't want to start on the A. Maybe we can get... What, is, what does this one do? Stop crackling, Ableton. I kind of like this. It's weird, though. this is going yeah me too that's why i don't want to like half-ass these chords i gotta find just the right one what if we break the rhythm here Give us a little bit more variety. I 
got to make this beat more interesting, too. It's so basic right now. We did that. Ooh, it flows very nicely there. At the very least, if I don't like it that much, we can do something like this. Um, actually, let's just consolidate this thing. Whoops. Why did they put the consolidate and the deactivate button right next to each other? What I was going to say is I could just essentially, I was going to copy this and put it here. And we don't ever actually go to this B until the final one when we're transitioning out. Which I could do. Do I have this selected still? Like this. Let's, let's hear this. This will be long, the whole thing. Because while it's going, let me start writing the drums. go back to the way it was let's keep it like this right now and let's start let's start doing these drums um so i i come up with this basic metronome version just so that whatever i play on the keyboard isn't affected by like because otherwise if i'm if i'm playing along to a, a full beat like this one already i'll sort of write to this beat and if I'm copy and pasting the verse beat to this break, whatever section you want to call this, I can find myself writing around the drums, and then I feel like I'm stuck with the drums. And then the whole song, the drums never change. Um, now, the rhythm is very similar with the keyboard, so I'm going to just copy and paste the drums right now um, from the verse. But let's go in and change them still. So mainly I want to copy and paste because I want this, this bum bum right away because those should always be there pretty much but as far as exactly what our little extra other notes are that we have throughout here those can change here and let's they should change Actually, I wonder, hang on, could I get away with something like this? Um, give me the snare too. Both of these selected together. No, no, that's too messy. Okay, what if we just put this right there? Actually, let's um, oh, I already do the double kick snare there. Maybe I don't want to do that there.
feels a little too sloppy. I might just keep it really simple. Bum, 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 you know? So I'll copy and paste this for now. Try that, and we're gonna add another drum drop off, like right here. Er, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's better. That's better. Full drum break. Because we don't have a lot of parts where the drums drop out, just right here otherwise. So it's nice to get another sort of breather from that thumping kick. Um, I want to do this as well. I'm going to copy the sidechain compression. I like to put sidechain compression on my hi-hats as well. Which I know people just talk about sidechaining the low frequencies. I do all of them, especially with lo-fi. Um, maybe not with other things but on the hi-hat we just sort of ease off a little bit doesn't need to be as intense as the other ones yeah that's better So that's sounding good. Um, we already have an organ for the main lead. I might, let's find something other than an organ, right? I, I don't wanna use the organ in the middle. It'll mean more when the organ drops out and then comes back in on the second part. So let's, let's put something else in the middle that's our sample because then also if we put something else that's entirely different, if we can somehow finagle it to come in over here, then honestly, we're just sort of done with the track. <laughs> That's uh, that's perfect because we have our, our little variation break and then our uniqueness for this part because otherwise right now this is just copy paste from right here. But we can give variety to it if we take whatever, you know, sample little melody we come up with in the middle and carry it over right there. So let's try that. As far as what we do, uh, first let me save it. Haven't saved in a little while. Let's... Should we dig through Splice? We're making good time on this. I mean, uh, this has taken me an hour and 40 minutes. So let's, um, I don't know, let's hang back. Let's, let's explore the realm of Splice. Immediately, I see something I want to try that's in Discover New today. Hang on, I'll, sw I'll switch to the screen that you can see in a second. Uh, okay. Boom, here we are on Splice. Um, Again, people are going to win me over on Splice with their kick-ass album covers. For why I like this one so much, fresh hip-hop, yeah, go for it. It might all suck, but I kind of like it. Um, Crate Digging has come up with some good break beats, but it might have other bits as well. We'll save that. Um, tropical rainforest. I tend to avoid the lo-fi ones unless I'm looking for drums, just because like if we end up doing this, we're gonna just find like finished stuff. Okay, I actually don't know what I would do for that. This seems unnecessary. You could just give us the snare and the hi hat by themselves. Who needs 
needs to... Why did I take all this time to write this myself? Yeah, see, this is why I tend to avoid these packs. They're not usually not that great. Um, as I've mentioned before, I've had some good good results from the crate digging ones. Ma it, no, no. Mainly for break beats. What do we got for fresh? <laughs> mm, now I'm feeling these. What else we got? Soulful beats. Is this just beats? aren't the right timing but I'm gonna still you know what there's one thing I was still hang on before we keep flipping through these samples real quick I'm gonna go back here there was one other thing I was talking about adding right here it was that shimmer and I still want to do that um, a few ways to add a shimmer I'm trying to think what way should we do now? Let's see. Let's try to make a totally fresh shimmer. So I'm taking in Helm, completely fresh scratch. Um, we're gonna lower the sustain and make the decay like really quick. Um, we're gonna also lower the volume. That's good, that might actually just be too short too. A little bit better. Um, let's try clicking on their delay. More feedback. Can we go faster? It's good. More feedback. Too much. Go like around 91. Okay, let's put a filter on. Let's hear it with everybody. Let's also send it to the reverb a ton. It's pretty good. Give it that side chain compression. Turn it down, it's a little loud. that's good um just need to solidify the chords we can make some changes from there then too 
We could even do now. Nah, let's just let's just get something in. It'll be easier to mess with later. piano here can't get it off whatever um maybe i do need to do them all as sevenths that's the problem Okay, except the last one. The tough thing too is the way that I play these. So if I play it too perfect, that it does that, I don't like it. But if I play it too sloppy, it gets a little too messy. So I have to find that sweet middle ground, which is really just gonna mean I'm just gonna have to play it a whole bunch and then it will feel it out, play it by ear, literally. Got it there. Snapshot this. So I liked the first two, I believe. And then the last two. Perfect. Let's just um, maybe tighten them up a little bit. These guys come in right here. Loop it to right there. Let's look at these again. I don't want to adjust them too much. This one, maybe we could try that. I like that. This one, if we grab the whole thing and just move it over, it won't change the chord sound. Same with this. Actually, it does change the chord sound a little bit. I guess because the rhythm is tied to the beat? No, it's not. I don't know. I'm crazy. I think I'm just paranoid. Turn this down. I st I'm still bothered by that second one. We can do something with this. Maybe we give them add our own staggers. I like that better already. Go with that, I'm gonna still turn this. Do we, oh yeah, we do. Now, 
Copy and paste. And let's um, consolidate it at this length. Loop it. Now let's just change the chords. So we go to a a C sharp minor seven. And then this is the right chord here too. And then this goes down to that F. Can I get fancy and like do that? I I like it. Let's go with that. Um I'm lost here. Where am I? Okay, there we go. Um, this is that F sharp minor again. I'm gonna. This will be easiest if I just make it. And then we just move these up accordingly. Actually, that is correct. Let me do the seventh. that right now i like it shimmer adds a bit um okay let's go back up here cool sound not what i want um spirit flutes i could go for a flute maybe are you guys are they all minor I suppose you got an F-sharp minor in here, do you? I mean, I can change the tone. I like this one for some reason. I have, you know what? I need not be so stingy, and let's just start experimenting with some weird stuff. I have over three... Thousand credits. I can just, I can just spend them. Don't need to be so cheap. <laughs> it's gotten to the point where I can just start spending them, and I don't need to feel guilty. Got to fire up the splice app first, because of course. Oh, I can't even move it to show you how discouraged I am. There we go. Come on, baby. And then now. A riveting stream content, I know. Come on, you bastard. What's taking you so long? OK. 
Okay, we're going to try closing it and reopening it. Uh, splice. Uh, come on, you bastard. Um... Oh, thank God I remembered my password right off the top of my head. Oh. Of course, God forbid you actually download the sample I want you to do. Why didn't this one ever download? I guess that doesn't matter. Now, I don't really know how that can use this. Especially because it's the wrong key and the wrong tempo. Whoops. But, tempo should adjust with warp. And then we're in G, uh, this is what, G minor? So let's just knock it down... One little peg, bing, right there, and then turn down the whole thing. Quantize. Um, I don't like this, like, little flip that it does. Hang on. This. Copy, paste. I don't know what this is marking. Doesn't seem like it's anything. Yeah, we're going to just cut out that little extra little flippy bit. It sounds better when I just loop this one bit. Um, but I do kind of like the flute. I knew when I heard this, I kind of liked it. Um... Sounds like a penny whistle. A little bit, yeah. It's interesting how... Um... So a little bit of its tone is given by the way that Ableton is warping it because if I change it over to complex we can hear that sounds dramatically different than complex pro complex pro sounds a lot more breathy you know you hear a lot more of the f uh, the wind blowing through the flute than just the tone that it's playing if I go to beats yeah, that again sounds more like complex, but I kind of like the the breathiness to it.
I'm, I'm, I'm individually changing a couple of the notes because, um, I don't know, I want a little bit of variety. It, it, it's such a short loop otherwise. It's like four seconds. That's the one I want, okay. two notes. like that um copy and paste it again uh first off this guy has no side chain compression on him that needs to change that might change how we adjust our volume too. This needs to be longer. I feel like this, I don't want this to be twice as long. We're just getting into the groove. Maybe I can add some variety in the organ that could justify a looping like this. Let's do that, hang on. I'm gonna rip out this middle one. Copy what I do over here. Um, this isn't okay. Good. It's not velocity sensitive, so it doesn't matter what these are. There. 
So we're sort of just taking our little uh, rhythm over here, changing the melody slightly. Oh, let's actually, what if we just did three in there? Yeah, I like that. I'm gonna turn the flute down just a little bit. Still a little too loud. Maybe the organ actually, oh, that's not the organ. Did I touch that? I'm gonna undo in case I accidentally changed that. Lower that, up this. Oh, you know what I realized too? We have the bass turned off this whole time. Um, <laughs> didn't even really notice. Um, I turned the bass off because I hadn't written it over on this part, but let's just write it real quick. Take two seconds. Um, so we start on, no, we start on C. We go to this B. We go to F sharp. And then do an A. Copy and paste this. just like that. idea to make this even jazzier. Mm. We'll give it a little swing in the hi-hats here. Right there. Do a bunch in a row. Yeah, 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 yeah. This is too too long. Let's just do this. out the flute at this part let's see yes we've heard enough of the flute fully you don't even need the bass I think yes just these two A lot of times I like to not have a final tonic. We just sort of hang on whatever chord we were just playing. But I do that a lot. So I think having this will be nice. Let's do one more thing. Go in the automation. For what is this mess? Oh, because it's a saved preset. Whatever. 
because that doesn't matter. Um, let's go in and change the gain here at the end, because otherwise it's just going to hang forever, and I don't want to fuck with that too much in the master. That's perfect. And then it ends by there. And whoops. Do that just so we got... When I export it, it'll do that. I'm giving plenty of tail end there. Um, this sounds really good. I'm liking how this sounds. Wow, we were just shy of making this a two-hour track challenge. Um, I don't know that we're officially done. I've been listening to this since the beginning. And technically, this middle part doesn't have a lot of variety. I could do... This was one thing I was thinking. We turn off this. Let's try this. I'm gonna I'm gonna leave it turned off and let's play from the beginning. I could also put in some like filter stuff to make it sound more interesting. I'm gonna just throw those on the master just so I can play around with it. Like, um, in fact, I'm gonna go crazy lazy, and we're just gonna do this. do that the snare really stands out that's set overall let me turn the snare down actually okay let me start from the beginning again beginning again let's say we start like this I like this. Here's what I want to do. Let's do it. Let's keep it. I want to do this, not filter type frequency. Start there and open up near the very end. I wanted to go down, right? That's what I thought. And then also resonance. Dells, man. Thank you so much for the subscription. I really, really appreciate it. It means a lot. As I said earlier, when uh, when Pun resubscribed, every, every one of you subscribers, you're the motivation that keeps me going. You are direct contributing to all of this Tuesday music coming out. I really appreciate it. Thank you. I also got to give a shout out to, I mean, none of the people are going to be here, but all the people that buy my music on Bandcamp. I put it up there for free, so no one needs to buy it. So everyone that buys it, just like all you people that sub, no one needs to sub to watch my channel. I'll never go sub only, but um, anyone that does that is going above and beyond, and I really appreciate it. Why did nothing happen? Oh, I'm in the wrong spot. <laughs> it should change right there. I rock. Oh, thank you very much. I appreciate it. Oh, here was the other thing I was going to do here. Let me, because the snare comes in so harsh, and the reason it comes in so harsh is because this is its. This is where it hangs out. So this filter is doing nothing to the snare. 
So we hear the the electric piano is a little muffled just because so much of it is the low end. And the kick is muffled, obviously, because the kick is a lot of low end. But the snare is not, so it just comes in really, really harsh. So we're, this is just a theory, but what if I just put on a utility right here and, whoa. And let's just lower the volume. And uh, so max volume is right here when the filter is gone. And, um, and we'll just bring this down to, I don't know how low, six. Let's give it the same curve that everybody else has. Like that's already much nicer. No, okay, whoop. Hang on a minute, hang on a minute. Needs to be a little, little less sharp of a curve there. go maybe it could just be like that and actually raise it up a pinch there I feel like that's not even really that noticeable because it gets louder along with everybody else so I can live with that. Um, okay, let's listen from the beginning. And I want to see if we made the right choice in waiting on the flute. I'm just worried the flute's going to get too old too quick. And if we do start it right here, it's a minute five and it goes to about 235. So it's like a minute and a half of flute. Mm. I don't know. I like that. Uh, I slam my open Ableton. Have any tip about using it? Um, just in general, uh, I have a problem about the sound of other tabs got muted. Wait, what? The sound of, of another tabs got muted when you open up Ableton. So like, like when you open Ableton, like another program, like YouTube or Twitch gets muted instead of, and then instead of Ableton. Okay. That is interesting. Um, what would be the cause of that? Do you have like an audio interface plugged in at all? That would be my first guess. Yes, you do. Here's what I think is happening. I think when you launch Ableton, it is switching to your audio interface your audio interface might have an output. My multi-effect is an audio interface. Really? Like your the guitar pedal you use? Is it plugged in like through USB? Oh, yeah. It, it, yeah, is it through USB? That might be it. Yes, okay. So I think what it's doing is when you launch Ableton... It is, this is just a theory. I feel like it might be trying to output your desktop audio through the USB out. So like for instance, if you had an AUGS to pull your the sound that's coming into your guitar pedal out to something else that would theoretically work. Now what you might also be able to do, a simpler version, is to go into your side panel. Can I just do it here? No, that's just my calendar. Uh, here, I'll just go to this menu right here. Streamception a little bit. Go to your audio right here and see what it's choosing for your speakers. Because I have a feeling when you click this, it's going to say it's your guitar pedal or something like that. And you might be able to manually change it. Now, that might mess with Ableton. If it does mess with Ableton, then you'll need to go into Ableton and go into your preferences and change your audio output device somewhere on here to maybe your computer speakers. Either way, they need to be the same one probably. Um, as far as what which combo you need and to get exactly what you want, you might just need to play around and experiment. But that's my theory, is that if you, if you go over and you click this sound thing right here, this is my ASIO interface that I'm using right now. Um, 
But here's what I do. So right now, my whole computer is going directly. The output sound is directly out of my USB interface. So it's sort of like what yours is doing, except the way I get around it is that I actually just pull the audio interface audio out, and then my speaker setup that I have has an aux cable. So I just plug it in through an auxiliary input. So, so therefore, I can just let mine go all out of my interface. I don't mind because then I just pull the interface sound and just plug it into my speakers and then it comes out that way. That way I don't have to mess with changing Ableton and my desktop in different ways. Um, so you might just need to play around, see what's best or try the AUGS route if that's possible. I don't know. I haven't really experimented with, um, with using, so I need to plug my headset to the pedal. Technically, yes. Yes, because all the audio is getting fed into the pedal, and so and your pedal is also going to act as the output. So I would think theoretically, if you plugged your headset into the pedal, like if it's got an audio output, that you would hear all of that. I I would think, technically. Um, yeah, uh, audio issues. Oh man, I've had so much problem with this, and now I stream with dual PC setup and simply take analog audio out from my interface rather than an RPC line. Uh, ASIO everything works perfect. See, I, I ran into a tremendous problem using an ASIO interface because I believe OBS does get along with it. But back in the day, it used to not. OBS would be like, I don't know what this interface is. I'm not going to touch it. I'm not going to do anything. So my workaround, and if anyone else has an ASIO interface and runs into problems, this is what I recommend. You do down. This is a this is a program. This was a paid program, and I I bought it. Long story about this program, but um, what this essentially does is it creates like virtual buses, sort of. Um, and these virtual buses can be understood by everybody. So far, I've never had anyone. Net, no program, no web application, nothing has ever had a problem with this. Um, so it, it can handle things really nicely. Um, uh, so it will work for ASIO alongside uh, WDM driver at the same time? Yes, I think so. Um, I'm fairly certain. Yes. And uh, if you want to know where to get this, here's the thing. It used to be a paid... Okay. It used to be a paid um, application. I need to find where this was. Maybe it's from here. Dang, I, I, I don't know where the link is. I should I should really put it in my description down below. But essentially it was a paid program and the developer who created it passed away. And I ran into a problem because you have to authorize your purchase to connect to their online server, you know, the same way you authorize any program you buy these days. But because the developer had died the authorization server went offline. So essentially this program that I bought, when I got a new computer, I could never authorize it. So I was like terrified. I was like, oh my God, I rely on this thing so much. Well, the um, I think it was like the cousin or something or the nephew of the developer posted online and was like, hey, yeah, you know, my uncle died but I know a lot of people use this program and need it. So um, I've been working with someone else who essentially created a, a, a crack for it. So it is sort of pirated now. That is the only way you can use the program is by pirating it. But then it just sort of makes it free for anyone, I suppose. I can't find it exactly. If you, if you Google search ASIO Link Pro and you just look around, I'm sure you can find the download somewhere. I can't, I can't find it right now. I mean, if you just Google it, the first thing that comes up is this. The Give Academy. Actually, this might be all you need. Yeah, it's got the patcher in it. So this is all you need. 
So yeah, you can just Google ASIO Link Pro. It'll be the first one that comes up right here. They even have a little how-to YouTube video. Pro. Yeah, and he teaches you, yeah, in 2021. Look at this. This was <laughs> this is brand new. Well, pre relatively brand new. It came out just like a couple months ago. That's interesting. Um, but yes, it's a it's a phenomenal tool that I use. Uh, usually, wait, but usually the ASIO interface will not work for ASIO Windows driver at the same time, but a USB mixer with ASIO will. Then uh, yeah, I recommend you you download this and and give it a try. It might be what you need. Uh, so ASIO mixer and main out to the line PC and use at the same time. See, the other nice thing, well, I don't want to do it because my audio might get messed up on the stream and I might have to, like, close OBS and reopen it. Sometimes I have to do that. Actually, can I do... This isn't going to be the right thing. No, that's not the right thing. Um, no. But essentially, if you bring it open, it will um, it'll show you some routing. Can I get a picture? Maybe they have a picture. Here it is. Here's just a picture of uh of like no no can i just look at this picture better stop no 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 open image in a new tab okay well it doesn't get any bigger but essentially um it gives you all this routing right so this is your interface and, and you get your inputs and you can choose which which route you want to send them to the useful thing i found with this as well is that your computer's like desktop output will show up as an input right here and then if you want, you can route that output as an input. And what that means is that you can then record any audio you hear just from your desktop directly into Ableton or something like that. So for instance, you know, I wouldn't need to go and like rip a YouTube video like to MP3 or something. I could just hit record in Ableton and press play on the YouTube video and it will just record the YouTube audio directly into Ableton. Um, I've found this to be in, yeah, loopback. I found this incredibly helpful because there was a time, um, it was, uh, last year during the pandemic where, um, as essentially my day job, I, I was laid off like many folks. And so I was just taking random freelance jobs I could here and there one of which was editing podcasts. And um, they wanted me to record the podcast as well. Um, and they would have them online on like a, like a Microsoft Teams app sort of thing. And while you can record in Microsoft Teams, the quality just like gets so squashed and it sounds awful when you use their recording feature. It, it functions, but it's just horrible. Um, but be very careful not to monitor your loopback channels. <laughs> yeah, I have never done that. Um, I haven't ever felt the need. But I found that if I just routed the audio this way and recorded their their conversation, it, like I just sat in the room and recorded into Ableton, I could get much higher quality audio than, than the team's recording, you know? Uh, so I would just do that. And then that way they got a higher quality sounding podcast that they were still able to do virtually because of course it was a pandemic so no one could even meet up to record stuff so so i found multiple uses from this program not just being able to stream uh, on obs you found your problem that's good i'm glad, glad to hear that grim was it something related to that just don't know how to solve it okay <laughs> well i don't know if i can necessarily help with that i think it might just take a little fiddling with your uh with your settings We'll see. Let me let me actually play this. Aeon's curious. So yeah. Feel free to share, Grim. I'm very proud of this lo fi track. I have not used the shaper box at all. I swear. <laughs> I have a habit of using that too much. So we're gonna try to not use it on this track. YouTube got muted. Ah, uh, 
it's because then it's routing it through your ASIO interface. I guess, I don't know. Try Grim getting this um, ASIO Link Pro that I use. Because that's sort of the same problem I would have. If you check my preferences, I'm able to get my audio to come through because I don't have it set to ASIO. I have it through uh, DirectX because I choose my virtual buses with the ASIO Link Pro, which then connects with the ASIO interface. If you're if you're desperate. Um here. I'll drop the link. But then I get guitar like ah that that could happen. That at least when you're recording, or well, that's one thing too, where if you use Ableton's like monitoring for your guitar, then yes, there will be a delay. There is on mine. When I, when I use this application and I do it, I get around it by, I just don't use Ableton's monitoring. I used to run a separate pedal out from my guitar pedal into an amp I had sitting next to me. And I would still do that if it didn't create so much buzz, but I think that's a grounding issue with the room that I'm in, um, which is why I record my guitar technically with no monitor, uh, which is, is gives its own difficulties, maybe not the best way to do it, but um, that's what my setup is, I guess. So technically, you can have up to 10 USB interfaces connected at the same time all alongside. They use different apps. Hmm. Well, at the very least, um, I think the ASIO Link Pro that I, I, I dropped would actually help in terms of getting the YouTube and Twitch and Ableton playing on the same channel together and, and, and not messing up or something like that. It will probably create lag when you're recording your guitar if you use um, the monitoring in Ableton. So might not be the most viable option for you. Um, but it is technically a solution to if you if you want them both to work. But also at the same time, and this might not also be that fun of an answer, but you can just like just do one thing at a time. You know, maybe you can't have it is more convenient if you can have YouTube and Twitch open at the same time as Ableton, but consider it as uh, Ableton making you not get distracted from your music making. <laughs> no, you can't use anything else other than me right now. <laughs> Stay focused, Grim. Don't go on YouTube. You'll fall into an endless hole of videos. Just focus on music making in Ableton. <laughs> You know, take a problem and make it a solution. <laughs> Maybe not the most practical thing, but... Uh... But yeah, okay. I think I like this track. It's simple. It's chill. It's uh, I don't know, the epitome of lo-fi. Um, I absolutely love these uh, electric piano sounds. Uh, audio drives are super annoying. This is why I keep, I try to keep my setup simple. Uh, cannot record from YouTube. 
et cetera. I, I've been using this ASIO Link Pro for like five years now, and I love it. And I agree with you. Keep it simple. Or also, I'm I'm in the the boat of like once I get it working, I'm just gonna I don't want to touch it. I'm gonna keep it the same. It's it's so beautiful when you get your setup just like working fine, and that's why like I'm always scared to update OBS or anything, <laughs> because when you update things, things break, and you know if it ain't broke, don't fix it. So uh, that's what I used to think. Now now I try to get ahead of it, and I'll, I'll update it and, and fix because typically when there's an OBS update, it improve it improves the performance of the whole program and. Uh, get less dropped frames or lag problems and stuff like that. So I guess you just got to stay ahead of the curve. That's the real solution, which is a tedious and endless one. But what more can be said? Um, I think I might be done here. I think I might need to go get some dinner. Oh, yeah, I have to reply to this um, chick that keeps... This this girl, fake girl that texted me out of the blue that keeps sending me spam junk that's just trying to catfish me or something. I'll send her a stupid meme or something. Or no, we were going to send her, I'm going to send her my newest track and be like, yo, bump this shit, you robot bitch. <laughs> see, uh, see if she even responds to it. We'll see. But... Send the slam wave. Yeah, that's, that's what I'll do. Yeah, you're a robot. Here's some cyberpunk music for you. Robots like cyberpunk, right? Probably. Was using Stream Elements fancy OBS a while, and then I found out uh, more advanced stuff also have more risk of failing down the road. So back to the original OBS. Yeah, I know people that use um, slobs, Streamlabs OBS and stuff. And um, why? I wonder. Like, what does what does Slobs have that OBS Studio doesn't? You know. I guess I use OBS Studio, not original original OBS. I did use to use that, but I don't use that anymore. I use OBS Studio because there's a lot more nicer things you can do on it. But um, I never understood the purpose of Streamlabs OBS uh, because it's chat overlay built in. I guess, but it's so it's so easy to put in a chat overlay. Like, hell, I could just do it right now. In fact, I could even do a fancy one. Like, um, do I even have one made up already? No. Like, Streamlabs, don't they have a... Uh, hang on. Go to my dashboard. All widgets. Chat box. Here's my... Here we go. Copy the widget tutorial. Add a... Is it a browser source? Add a browser, call it chat. There's the browser link, and wabam. Say something. Yeah, you do the exact same stuff on OG OBS, but you have to do it manually. But like this took like two seconds to make. I think it is. Hang on. Bam. There you go. Now you chat go. is part of my stream. Eh. Um, hi. Thanks for following. Hello, welcome. <laughs> that literally took me two seconds to create. So it's like, I don't know what Slobs has got that uh, that regular OBS can't do. There we go. Now chat's on screen. We got a chat overlay. Yeah, see? <laughs> yeah. I mean, I can get that looking a little nicer, but whatever. We're not even going to have that. We don't even get it out of here. Okay. I need to get some food. I'm hungry. I want to thank you guys so much for hanging out. Whenever I do these late night Tuesdays, different than my normal Tuesday at like 2 p.m. on a weekday, um, I'm always worried no one's going to show up because I know I have a lot of European viewers and it's like 4 or 5 a.m. for them right now. Um, so being able to do a stream like this and have you guys hang out for the entire stream and chat and be super friendly and nice and, and crazy supportive pun subscribe Dell's man subscribed and I'm high just followed. I really appreciate you guys. It motivates me to, uh, to keep going and, um, 
and to never feel like these late night Tuesday makeups are are futile and that I'm broadcasting to no one and whatnot. So I, I, I genuinely mean it. I really appreciate you guys hanging out and showing up. But that's going to do it for me today. Next stream will likely be next Tuesday, I suppose. Um, there will be, I, I'll, I'll get ahead of the curve and let you know, one Tuesday will be canceled already preemptively. The one that's going to be October 26th. I'm going to be, um, I'm going to be busy that entire week. Crazy work stress. But that's none of your problem. Let's raid someone today. Yeah, should we do that? Who's, uh, who's live? Oh. Hang on. Is this just starting? They, oh. Okay. So this is not a music streamer, but I gotta give props to these people. This is a TF2 tournament that uses my music as the intro music. I'm super stoked on them. I'm going to send you guys over there. Whether or not you want to watch the tournament is up to you. But we will go over there. Thanks for watching. Thanks for hanging out. And I will catch you all next time.